This is the best MCU Disney Plus show. Hey guys, my name is Joseph Curtis, and if you love movies just as much as me, you have come to the right place. Now do me a huge solid and click that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want to follow me on the following social platforms, that would be great as well. Now, let's start talking Loki Season 2. My overall general thoughts with Season 1 and Season 2 combined is I love the show. I think it's a near-perfect show. The only issues that I've had with it is some pacing, funny enough, in the middle of both seasons. Episode 2, I found to be a little bit jarring with some of the execution of the storytelling, primarily in the beginning of that episode, really threw me off. But then you start to kind of accept what they're doing and you kind of forgive it later on with other episodes that transpire. My God, by the time you get to the ending of this, this genuinely feels like a fantastic, wrapped up in a nice package series finale. I just wanted to express not just 60 seconds of my thoughts um, for an episode. I wanted to express my love for this character of Loki. And there are two names, two names that you guys need to remember and be grateful for with how well executed this show was made and the quality that it was made in. And that's Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Do yourself a favor, look up the movie, The Endless. I totally understand why somebody like Kevin Feige would look at these two amazing creators and see some of those projects that they've made, especially like The Endless and said, you are perfect for my MCU. They did even a better job than the previous directors. The sheer amount of world buildings, hashtag really, multiverse building, and the way they approach the character of Loki within this scenario. Essentially what season two is about is a bad day at the office, specifically with the TVA. The whole TVA is just being completely crumbled from within ever since the death of Kang, or I mean, he remains a variant of Kang, who was the sole protector of the sacred timeline and his job was to keep it that way and if he were to die multiverse chaos and multiple kings will be coming and that's essentially where we are left off in to season two it never leaves that suspension that that tension of oh my god it feels like the whole world the universe is crumbling around us and we have to find a way to save the tva to save all these timelines or all of existence is gone now before i get into the the spoilery part of where they ended this season i really want to talk about the side characters for a little brief moment these are some of my favorite side characters in the mcu primarily with two uh, actually, sorry, three. You have Sylvie, who is essentially a variant of Loki, and Loki loves Sylvie, and essentially he loves himself. It's totally Loki. But Sylvie just brings this personality, charm, and wit, and bluntness that Loki needs. And she stands on her own. The writing for her character is dynamic. She has such a strong performance. Another character that I really enjoyed and was introduced in this season is Obi, played by the phenomenal actor Kehu Kwan, who was previously uh, starring in the Oscar winning film Everything Everywhere All at Once, where he also won an Oscar. Incredible film, incredible actor, and Obi is one of those unique characters that comes out of nowhere, and you're glad they came out of nowhere because they stole the entire season. And the last character that I wanted to mention that I want to give all my love and support to is Mobius played by Owen Wilson my god I love Owen Wilson he plays this character so well with not just comedic timing and that is primarily how you're introduced to this character just a really funny worker office B worker and the more you go along in the series, especially in season two, there are a lot deeper levels to this character about what, like who even is Mobius? How does Mobius see himself in this world? And he really tackles with these questions in season two. There was another life that was yours, but instead he who remains kidnapped you and made you one of these workers in the TV and he, and he basically warped your mind and he's wrestling with the identity of who he was in this other timeline. I, I thought the way they potentially wrapped up this character, because this really does feel like a series finale, was really solid. I love the way they ended it for this season. There could be more, but I like where they ended it. Okay, now 
with some spoilers. Loki, he has some of the greatest character development in the MCU. I believe it's between him and Scarlet Witch to being an Iron Man and Captain America of being the greatest developed characters ever in a comic book like series franchise. And I, 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 would, I would say that he's definitely in the top three. Bar none, just incredible work that Kevin Feige has done with this character because he's the man behind the scene. Like I, from my previous review, I was talking mad crap about Miss Marvel. I mean, the Marvels, I love Miss Marvel because that was a very disappointing film. Uh, it could have been a lot better, but genuinely that is not the brightest <laughs> when it comes to the MCU. This though gives me hope for the MCU. This show gives me hope for what the MCU can bring forth from this show with the multiverse, with Kang, and where it's leading to with Secret Wars, the Kang Dynasty, or whatever the heck it's gonna be called. Because of the character of Loki literally carrying the multiverse right now, and that's the spoiler, he's essentially the new He Who Remains. And the whole purpose of the character of Loki is he's always wanted to have purpose, glorious purpose. He is burdened with glorious purpose and Owen Wilson has one of the best lines in the MCU where he says that sometimes the burden can be far greater than the glory of someone's purpose it's pretty much said like that but it's one of the most brilliant lines I've heard in the MCU ever and it's so apparent where you fully realize this is the most perfect way for a character to go out where he does have purpose and he's burdened with it where he has to literally hold all of the timelines and give them life consistently for eternity so that everyone else can live. That's how it ends. He is he who remains. He is Loki, the god of stories, the god of the multiverse, essentially holding everything together in the palm of his hands. And he chooses to do it with dignity and honor and respect. And it's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If I had to give Loki uh, overall the show a score, it'd be a 9.5 out of 10. It's literally almost that perfect. Just a little bit of issues here and there. My God. If you have not watched this show, what the heck are you doing? Watch Loki right now. It's incredible, has beautiful writing. It is well made. Morning. Okay, so I completely forgot to talk about Jonathan Majors, uh, and that is my bad. So I decided to wake up early and add this to the video. Jonathan Majors is an incredible actor, and I love his performance as Kang, uh, Victor Timely, even his performance in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania I thought was fantastic, even though that film wasn't fantastic. Obviously, Elephant in the Room, unfortunately, something happened earlier this year in March that uh, it's pretty bad um, and it's controversial. All I will say is I hope that it's not true and I hope that he can go back to his career. Uh, I'm not saying, um, I'm hoping that, you know, if it is true, that he gets away with it. No. If obviously he did it, he needs to pay for his, you know, his actions. I do hope that there is a resolve to this and that it's good for both sides. So just wanted to get my opinion out there about that, about the controversial part. But as the performer for the series of Loki, for the greater threat of the MCU, Kang, he who remains. He just invokes perfection. This man takes his time, and this is just me guessing, I believe he takes his time with his characters. He really gets to know what makes them tick. Mind you, he not only has to play one version of this character, he has to play multiple versions. We got two to three different versions in the last year, and I feel like there's gonna be a lot more of Kang. And specifically with Victor Timely, he is so far different from He Who Remains, who is a very spunky kind of uh, sporadic character villain, who is a villain, but he's not a villain. He's here for the greater good to control the sacred timeline, keep the other Kangs at bay. So I guess he is the best out of the Kangs until you meet Victor Timely. And I gotta say that is my favorite performance out of all the Kangs because it's the sight of hope to a character that is infinitely evil at the end of the day. There are so many versions that turn 
evil. But this one, at least in this series, I, I don't know the comic books with Victor Timely, but with this show, there is a glimmer of hope of Kang, that he can be good and he can use his knowledge and power for the greater of the MCU. There's this one moment that almost brought me to tears where you genuinely feel sorrow, you genuinely feel bad for this character when he looks at Loki when the temporal loom is a failsafe and they all realize it's an infinite amount of timelines that are just going to keep on growing and growing and there's no point in doing this. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of centuries that Loki did. He says, I'm sorry. It's the most simple words ever done, but it's how your actor executes it. And, and that was the moment that sealed it for me. Like, oh yeah, this is this is my favorite performance out of uh, any of the Jonathan Majors Kang performances. Those are my thoughts on the series of Loki. What are your thoughts? Please let me know down in the comments section. This is one of the greatest things in the MCU. It's the best Disney Plus series, and it's probably going to be in my top 10, just in general, projects from the MCU. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. It really means a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to be blessed.